The Aggie student section has been camping out since this morning for this one. Jalen House in New Mexico in the building, a must win for them. But for the Aggies, led by Ian Martinez and Great Osibor, know they can win tonight for their first outright title. basketball on CBS Sportsnet. You're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. We're in Logan, Utah. It's senior night for the number 22 ranked Utah State Aggies as they host the New Mexico Lobos in their Mountain West Conference regular season finale. You see Utah State at the top of the conference standings. New Mexico looking for conference win number 11. Welcome in, everybody. Jordan Ken alongside Mike O'Donnell. The stakes are huge in this one here tonight, Mike. Utah State looking for their first outright Mountain West Conference title with a win this evening for New Mexico. They're on a razor's edge for the NCAA tournament, one of the last four teams in. What a monster game in the Mountain West. Utah State, one of the best stories in all of college basketball. New Mexico needs that one more quad one win to bolster their resume. Utah State has been defying expectations all season long. A big reason for that their leader on and off the floor Darius Brown if you're looking for steady point guards look no further than Darius Brown he is an elite point guard and somehow still underrated seventh in the nation in assist to turnover ratio Darius Brown is big time some early adversity for New Mexico their leading scorer Jamal Mashburn Jr. woke up this morning with an illness will not go tonight a huge void in the offensive lineup for the Lobos however sophomore Don of intent more than capable of shouldering the load if you like good passing you're gonna love donovan dent he is an elite passer in every sense of the word top 30 in the nation in assists his ability to look off defenders and find open teammates is off the charts just a sophomore he already has three game winning layups this season donovan dent is serious the stakes are higher than the elevation in logan the table is set for utah state can they capitalize or will new mexico play spoiler line up opening tip when will we come back The herd is ready in D. Glenn Smith Spectrum here in Logan, Utah. The student section for the Aggies, one of the loudest in the nation, ready to bring the noise on what is one of the biggest games in Utah State basketball history. A chance for the Aggies for an outright title in the Mountain West. Richard Patino's third season at New Mexico has improved the win total each and every year, has his team knocking on the door of the NCAA tournament. Now let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Kubota. For New Mexico, Donovan Dent having to shoulder more of that load. Jamaro Baker Jr. gets the start in the absence of Jamal Mashburn Jr. And for Utah State, Mason Falslev, who sat out practice yesterday 100% ready to go. One of their Swiss Army Knife players that can do a little bit of everything. And how about Danny Sprinkle, Coach of the Year candidate, nationwide and in this conference, 25-5, and five, led Montana State to back-to-back -back NCAA appearances before he got here to Utah State. And, you know, Jordan, the atmosphere in the spectrum is off the charts right now. I could barely hear you when we were doing the opening. This, this place is rocking. Lobos win the tip, they go down low. JT Toppin bothered some finesse with the left hand, though. Uh, you're looking at the potential freshman here in the Mountain West, and guess who gets the steal? Jalen House off the full court press. That's something that House does all season long. And Toppin, back-to-back -back buckets for the freshman of the year in the Mountain West candidate. That's the kind of start that you want for New Mexico. Four points in the first 30 seconds for Toppin. Exactly what New Mexico was hoping for. And then an offensive foul against Johnson on the illegal screen. Post-entry pass into Toppin. You can see his little turn from the right shoulder with his left hand. He's got great touch. One of the best freshmen in the country in the steal with House. Tough finish from Toppin. Your officials tonight, Mike Littlewood, Randy Richardson, and D.G. Nelson. 
Already a fast start for the Lobos. Here's Dent off the handoff, trying to get it down low to Nelly Jr. Joseph. Intercepted by Great Osibor. Remarkable story. It's been his first handful of years at Montana State with Coach Sprinkle. Tries to wiggle his way to the rim. No good there. Lobos back the other way. Saw some contact underneath the rim there, Jordan. The corner three for Baker off target. Nice. What a pass. Osibor down the down. floor. Foul though as he goes up. And that'll send him to the free throw line. Excellent look down low. The elite vision from Darius Brown. We've seen it all season long from him. He's 14th in the nation in assists per game. An incredible steady hand for Utah State and head coach Danny Sprinkle. Gives us a little room to just speak the accolades of great Osibor this season. Was a backup at Montana State with Danny Sprinkle. Now gets the starting gig this year with Utah State. And Mike, in your opinion, might just be one of the candidates for player of the year in the Mountain West. He is a candidate for player of the year. If he doesn't win newcomer of the year in the Mountain West, I'll be absolutely shocked. But you know, Jordan, that's the next evolution of his game at the free throw line. He's just a 64% free throw shooter. If he's anywhere close to 75%, he's going to be averaging over 20 points a game. He also draws a lot of fouls throughout the game, so he's going to have his opportunities. And then a foul against New Mexico. Offensive foul. They're going to get Nelly Jr. Joseph as he was trying to get some positioning on Isaac Johnson. Reason why there's so much electricity in the building. Top offenses in the conference this year. New Mexico, 82.5 points per game. Utah State, just under 80 points per game. But they do it in different ways. New Mexico loves to run. They're top five in the country in tempo. Utah State, they're an efficient court scoring team. A really good example on that last play. Empty side, little roll action. Johnson, the tough shot over House. His first bucket of the game. House draws two defenders, kicks it back up top to Baker. House, the baseline drive, trying to get by Martinez. Surveys the paint, tough fadeaway, feathers it in. He'll do that. He, he may get caught on the baseline. You think he's going to get caught defensively, but he's so good and crafty at pulling himself out of difficult situations. Brown dribbling around the cones, nearly knocks down the jumper, but a foul as he was coming back down to earth. And so Utah State, another trip to the free throw line. Empty side pick and roll executed really well by Utah State. The help's just a little too late for New Mexico. And here's House. He's stuck very Steve Nash-esque, orchestrating along the baseline. Doesn't have a great look, but he has made difficult mid-range and long-range jump shots off the bounce his entire career. Darius Brown, just one of two seniors honored tonight, and that first foul was against Jalen House. So keep in mind on that because they need him to go the distance this evening. Brown, cool, calm, and collected, knocks down two free throws. Dent trying to dish it down low, another turnover. Aggies out and running. Here's Martinez down the left. Martinez blows the roof off the building. <laughs> Darius Brown slows up just enough for Martinez and on his head, Jordan Kent. On his head. Wow. The crowd losing its mind here in Logan. That's also the second foul against Jamaro Baker and Ian Martinez. Will step to the line for a chance on a three-point play after what is sure to be a highlight real dunk that'll look for the ages for Utah State.
It's interesting, Mike, right after New Mexico got that excellent 4-0 start, Utah State has just seized the momentum already. And it's weathering the storm. And I always feel like you can weather a storm better at home than you can on the road. House no good. Offensive rebound put right back in by Nelly Jr. Joseph. He's one of the more underappreciated front court players in the Mountain West. Nelly Jr. Jo Joseph brings a ton of energy. Osibor spinning and somehow gets it to drop. Foul is on JT Toppin. That'll be his first, and already the foul's racking up. This is something that Osibor does exceptionally well. The spin move off a quick dribble bounce, taking a taller front court defender and baiting him enough to set up that spin move. Something that makes Osibor so good. We talk about his footwork a lot, but he draws almost seven fouls a game. That's 27th best in the country. Free throws no good, false left, steps on the line before you can throw it off a New Mexico player. So it'll be Lobo ball. But Utah State three for their last three, opening up this game three of four from the field. Toppin left all alone, good again with the left. Toppin now with six points. So despite the energy in the building, New Mexico has been able to go for it. That blows by House. House trying to get it to Junior Joseph. His shot bounces in. And the touch that we're seeing from New Mexico early on. But Junior Joseph scored before he caught the ball. That just means that he did all of his work with his feet to give himself better position and a better angle to get that bucket. Osibor. Step back. Baseline check. Oh, it's Mr. Efficient in the Mountain West. He can do it all. New Mexico, six of nine from the field in the early going. So efficient on offense as well. Ten, tough angle right there. Another offensive putback as Toppin cleans it up. Even though Donovan Dent will get counted for a missed shot, it almost counts it as an assist because he's such a great finisher, an elite finisher around the rim. He draw two, draws two, sometimes three defenders. That's open, opens up opportunities for offensive rebounds. Eight points for Toppin, false left, working against House. Somehow finds the angle and gets off the window. And you know, Jordan, I know you really like his game. Uh, he's just a freshman. He's got a really high ceiling for Utah State. Former football star in high school, able to control some of that athleticism. This time, though, True Washington will draw the foul. We'll catch our first breather in what has been a wild start here in Logan, Utah, with the early lead for the home team Aggies. And back and forth we go. Dent draws three, leaves top and open for the putback. Boy, it's a good one here in Logan. Stick with us. Watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. 16-14 advantage, Utah State here on Senior Night. A chance to win the outright Mountain West Conference regular season title with a victory tonight. Let's get to the keys to the game. Brought to you by Daisy Cottage Cheese. Mike, what do you got for us? New Mexico has to make great Osibor uncomfortable. So far, not doing a great job. And then they must force the tempo. They want to play fast. New Mexico is one of the fastest teams in the country. Utah State. Perfect half-court possessions will give them better transition defense and have that extra pass mindset. And you look at the games that New Mexico has lost, it's when opposing teams are able to move the basketball and they have over 20 assists in a game. That's something that Coach Sprinkle talked to us about. He said passing is going to be a huge key offensively for us. Yeah, he also talked about the fact those live ball turnovers feed exactly what New Mexico wants to try and do in transition. Sometimes you feel like when you play against New Mexico or you're watching New Mexico play, especially a steal from Jalen House almost feels like three steals because his ability to get a big bucket and also they feed off of that. I feel like New Mexico feeds off of steals more than if they feed off a dunk. 
Drew Washington, the freshman from Phoenix, Arizona. Misses both free throws, so a chance there to tie the game, and New Mexico comes up empty. Both teams very efficient over their last handful of trips. Utah State, six for their last six. New Mexico, four for their last five. Lassiter, stumbling to the rim, gets it in. He's putting on a YMCA Sunday afternoon show right now. Old school game for Great Osborne. Seven points, three of four from the field for Great. Blind deflection by Martinez into the hands of Brown. You can tell he wants the ISO again. Brown from the deep end off the front of the rim. It's Falsler flying in for the rebound. Osibor thought about it this time. Puts it on the deck, spinning. That's going to be a foul on the spin move. And New Mexico, as we said, the whistle starting to pile up. That's against Jalen House, and that'll be a second personal. And that play was kept alive by the freshman Mason Falslev. Just a missed box out opportunity by Mustafa Amsir. Now, Mike. We've said before, no, Jamal Mashburn Jr. out with an illness. Jalen House now goes to the bench early in this game with the two fouls. Pivotal moment here for New Mexico. Tempo, pace on both ends of the floor need to be controlled by Donovan Dent in this situation. Osibor skies for it, tries to flip it in. Offensive rebound, gets it the second time. Man, how good is this kid? How good is this kid? Danny Sprinkle said New Mexico was the more physical team when the Lobos defeated the Aggies in Albuquerque in January. This foul here on Martinez. But one more look, Mike. A great Osborne is absolutely dominating in the paint, doing all of his work early to get himself good position. I mean, there's not one, not two, but three Lobos constantly around him, and he still finds the right angle to score. High-level stuff. Key moment here for Donovan Dent gets right to the cup unimpeded. That's what he does. He's not looking to score from the three-point line, although he has improved from last season. Just an elite finisher around the rim. And Coach Patino said he's excited to see what Dent can do next year without having to share the floor with both House and Mashburn. Former California High School State Player of the Year has really grown into his own. And his second season nearly forces the steal. Six to shoot for Brown. Brown has to force it up. He'll miss everything in New Mexico forcing the shot clock violation. Watch the speed from Donovan Dent. It's a quick little hezzy, and you see him jump in to Osibor. And not a lot of sophomore point guards would have the guts to do that, but he knows it's the right play to make. He's either getting lamp or he's getting fouled. Dent in the paint. Oh, under the outstretched arm of the Utah State defender somehow gets it to go. New Mexico six for their last seven from the field. Osibor draws another foul, this time coming over Quinton Webb, whistled for the infraction. So Donovan Dent is not Kyrie Irving, but he's got a lot of Kyrie Irving in his game. His ability to finish around the rim with craftiness, he's got great touch, it's almost like he does geometry in his mind when he's finishing around the rim. His balance and patience as well, too, when he's yep. navigating the paint with the taller defenders. But here is Osibor, the first of a one and one as Utah State finds himself in the bonus with 12 and a half minutes left in the first half as Osibor hits his fourth free throw of the night already. So if we know that, there's a really good chance that Coach Danny Sprinkle knows that, and they are going to continue to run offense through the interior for the rest of this first half. I know if I was Darius Brown, I'd be trying to do that every single time. 1-3-1 one, one look coming from Utah State. Mustafa Amsil cashes in from outside. First three of the night for New Mexico. Lobos fans have been waiting for Amsil to get hot because he could be the X factor offensively for New Mexico. Was a big time three point shooter. Excellent inside out action, corner three, no good. But a high quality look for the Aggies. Dent in transition, can't finish, bothered by Brown. Here comes Brown racing down the floor, outside. It's Martinez.
Martinez, six points, two a two from the field. Dent can't split the defenders. Brown, open runway to the cup. And another two for Utah State as they pad the lead. Mexico needs a bucket here to stay within an arm's reach. Dent up top, 10 to shoot. Martinez checks him. Omsil, another triple, two for two off the go. bench. And Omsil showing you why he leads the conference in scoring off the pot. There you go. He's the X Factor offensively. Stretches the floor, opens up so many driving lanes for Dent when Omsil's making threes. Critical triple for New Mexico to quiet this crowd. Osibor can't connect on his three. And a chance here for New Mexico to either tie or pull within one. The hedge from Osibor. Omsil wants another one. Three for three as Omsil is on fire. Two words, Jordan Kent. Heat check for Mustafa Amsil. So after trailing by six with this crowd as loud as they've been all night long, back-to-back -back threes from Mustafa Amsil has tied it up at 27 apiece. Martinez, contested step back triple in and out. Joseph with the rebound. Dent. Cradles it like a running back, picks up the foul on the floor from Brown. How good has this game been in the Mountain West? It's like been that all season long. Dent, Hezzy, cross, kick, Omsil, three triples in a row. We got a good one here in Logan. CBS celebrates Women's History Month. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Kubota. Together we do more by AT&T. We believe connecting changes everything. And by GEICO. For all your insurance needs, it's easy to GEICO. A look at your last five Mountain West Tournament title winners. Utah State has appeared in four of the last five championship games with two titles, New Mexico. They have four Mountain West Conference titles, their last in 2014. But for Utah State, the importance of tonight, a victory here would give them their first outright regular season title in the Mountain West underneath first-year head coach Danny Sprinkle, first year at Utah State, comes over from Montana State, and he talked a lot about his off-season preparation that the players discussed was unlike anything else they've ever done. And it had to be different, and it had to be gritty and physical and aggressive because Utah State didn't retor return a single player who scored a point from last year's team. 13 new faces. It was a complete and total reload. Coach Danny Sprinkle will be, should be, the Mountain West Coach of the Year, and he'll be in the running for National Coach of the Year. Asabor, the vision cross court, the corner three blocked, though, by Donovan Dent. But Danny Sprinkle said coming in, we had a lot of individuals that were trying to play to be starters as you look at his career trajectory. It wasn't until about the Cayman Islands, that trip where they won three games in that tournament where he felt like we could do something special as Washington make that web skies for the steal. And as you said, Mike, the game the head coach in April returned zero players, zero points from last season, and five of his 16 players are freshmen. Picked ninth in the preseason in the Mountain West rankings and has dramatically exceeded any and all expectations nationally. 6-0 run for New Mexico. Toppin trying to go to work against Osibor. The up and under can't get the finish. Loose rock. Here comes Brown. 
I just love Brown's eyes are always up. Very rarely is he ever going to make a mistake. I mean, that's Brown's not going to get credit for that assist. But that was all of him pushing in transition and not forcing a shot. Martinez now with eight points, and that's going to be a foul on the floor against Brown, his second personal. And it's interesting, Brown right now 17th most minutes played in college basketball history, second most this season. And for the 25 wins this season for Danny Sprinkle, Brown's been a huge part of it. But now he's got to be careful being in foul trouble. He will regularly play 38, 39 minutes a game and not think twice about it. Keep an eye on that as he's trying to guard Donovan Dennis. Asabor with the block on top in. Number 22, Javon Jackson stepping onto the floor for Utah State. He's been excellent lately. Here's Brown stepping into the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shot. Nothing but nets. Brown, eight points, three of five from the field to go along with five assists and four rebounds already. Wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot of switching as is for Utah State. They just switched three positions there quickly. Martinez, some excellent one-on-one -on -one defense. Thought about the three. This time dribbles it off his knee, but a foul is whistled first. And that'll send Martinez to the free throw line. Timeout on the floor. Utah State leads by four. Darius Brown, has he cross? Mid-range jumper, old school game. He's got Utah State up four. Welcome back tonight. We honor Shari Hawkins, one of the most decorated female athletes in Utah State history. Hawkins was the 2022 U.S. National Pentathlon Champion at the USATF Indoors and represented Team USA in the Heptathlon at the 2019 and 2023 World Championships. CBS Sports celebrates Women's History Month, recognizing the outstanding contributions women have made on and off the field of play. Hawkins was a five-time Aggie All-American, still holds program records in the heptathlon, pentathlon, and high jump, and obviously her career, almost as exciting as everything we're feeling right now in this arena, because you've got Utah State, a four-point lead. They have a chance here, Mike O'Donnell, to win their first outright conference title. They're shooting 60% from the field, 10 rebounds, seven assists. However, it's New Mexico with no Jamal Mashburn Jr., Jalen House on the bench, only trailing by four. And zero fast break points for New Mexico. That is their bread and butter offensively. Martinez now up to nine points after knocking down the free throw. Utah State in the bonus. New Mexico has already racked up eight fouls in this first half. Martinez, two of two from the line on that trip. Now in double figures. At 22 points and led the Aggies in scoring in their loss January 16th in Albuquerque. And well on his way to replicating that effort. House back in the game for New Mexico as Dent catches a breather. Amsil backs him down low. He's got 11 points off the bench. When your leading scorer is out and not playing, that's what New Mexico's dealing with. No Jamal Mashburn. You have to have another guy step up, that third guy to step up to support Donovan Dent and Jalen House. And no question, it has been Mustafa Amsil. 11 points. Asabor spinning, double team misses, finishes through the contact. Did you see him pick up the ball on the spin move to avoid that potential steal? What a smart, heady IQ play in the post from Asabor. Washington skies with the left hand, Toppin rips it down, puts it right back in. JT Toppin shoots 63% from the field. That's 12th best in the nation. He is easily one of the most talented players in college basketball. Big time bright spot for New Mexico. Tendisho wants this ISO here. 
Martinez dumps it off to Osibor, somehow comes up with the catch. Osibor knocked to the floor, no whistle. It's going to be out of bounds against Utah State, New Mexico ball, and a bit of a wild sequence there. Osibor didn't catch it clean, but there was enough contact where it looked like that could have been a foul. A little push off by Omsiel in the back with his right arm. Should have been called. That was missed. I think it caught everybody on, off guard. Yeah. So New Mexico, you could argue, gets away with one there. They trail by four, just over six minutes left. Lobos, one of the last four teams in, according to Jerry Palm. House, through the contact, takes the shot, able to finish. That was perfectly executed zoom action for New Mexico. House with four points, limited action because of those two early fouls. Johnson lets it fly from up top, no good. Oh, what House a quick cross. crossover. Johnson bothers it enough, though. Brown racing to the cup, tries to pass it cross court, deflected by Omsil. Baker, his three. That's going to be knocked out of bounds by Martinez. Officials rule it New Mexico ball. But then they're going to change the call. Utah State ball. And Isaac Johnson doing a great job just getting to the point of attack and doing enough to throw the angle off her house. Brown will walk it down now. Trying to work off the screen from Johnson. Aduje, the drive, nearly stolen as Dent gambles. Johnson this time trying to use the size up and under. Can't fish it through with the right. And then a foul by Johnson after the miss. That entire possession was saved by Nelly Jr. Joseph, acting as the help defender on that drive. 17 foul. Great possible now back in the game. That's the 17th foul against Utah State. And Amsia will head to the line. For Johnson, just one of those mistakes he can't compound as far as reaching and trying to go over the back after a missed shot. So Mustafa Amsia, the transfer from Dayton. Bit of a slow start this season, just 20% from the field in the first 10 games, but has really found his rhythm, especially tonight. A game high 13 points now. Just a great sign for New Mexico's offense. Coming off a game where they beat Fresno State, he went just one of five from three. He has not missed a three tonight. Three for three. It's been a two and a half minute scoring drought for Utah State. A Duje, the one two step. Bothered at the peak, knocked out of bounds. It'll be Aggie ball. But you really get the sense that New Mexico is starting to tighten up that interior defense the last couple of trips down the floor. And it needs to happen because Utah State gets a majority of their points in the two-point range. So they don't shoot a lot of threes. When they're making threes, they're almost their offense almost impossible to stop. When you look at their point distribution, over 56% of their points are from the two-point range area. That's 37th most in the country. That just means inside the arc, that's their sweet spot. Which is a rarity in today's game. No question. So many teams rely so much on the three-point shot. They're just one of eight from beyond the arc for the night. Really helps when you have great Osibor operating inside the three. He's got two seconds. Osibor to the cup and another tough finish. 15 points for great. No look pass from House. Bothered again. As Brown is able to come over, Osibor running the break. The Euro step can't complete it though. Omsil trailing, firing off target. Joseph offensive rebound, put back, and the foul. Utah State and great Osibor setting the pace. Little ISO, tough finish for Osibor. 
You're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. Thursday at 3 Eastern, get ready for some Mountain West tourney action as the men's quarterfinals tip off from Las Vegas. Find out who will move one step closer to the big dance here on CBS Sports Network. Check out the brackets as of right now. How about UNLV currently sitting at the four seed as far as what they've been doing? They've given mayhem to all six of these potential teams that could find themselves in the NCAA tournament. Colorado State, New Mexico are projected to be in the NCAA tournament, according to Jerry Palm, and they don't even get a first round bye in the Mountain West. That's how deep the Mountain West is. And to your point, Jordan, that's how good UNLV has been. They're just not one of the hottest teams in the Mountain West. They're one of the hottest teams in college basketball, period, have won 10 of the last 11. Nelly Jr. Joseph will head to the line, misses the front end. The opportunity for a three-point play. And so tied up at 37 apiece, just under four minutes left in this first half. Utah State shooting 56%, rejected by Joseph, but a foul on the floor against New Mexico. That's against Dent, and that'll be his second personal. You can see the game plan right now for Utah State offensively. When they don't have anything, they're just attacking the rim. And that's absolutely what you should do. You're already in the bonus. Get to the rim, get to the free throw line. It's a great way to manufacture points and find new rhythm for yourself offensively. And it's really been three players doing the heavy lifting for Utah State. Osibor with 15, Martinez with 10, Brown with 9. Only four points total from the rest of this roster combined. And we've seen Martinez and Brown get to the free throw line multiple times. They're both over 40, excuse me, both over 84% from the free throw line. House, cool, calm, and collected in the paint. Draws the foul as he's able to get to the cup, and now he'll take a trip to the free throw line. I'll go ahead and add another C word there. Crafty along the baseline. Just got a lot of that Steve Nash-esque ability to find shots when it looks like you, it's an impossible situation. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Brent Stover, Wally Zerbiak, Chris Walker, and Seth Davis are standing by in our New York studio. They'll get you up to speed on today's college basketball action. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. And you talk about the craftiness of house. It takes a different type of patience and awareness to not speed your game up when you're deep in the paint with your back to the hoop like House was. You live with some of those decisions where they don't go well because so many do go well for Jalen House. New Mexico takes back the lead. Just over three minutes left here in the first. Osibor trying to draw the foul on the jumper, doesn't get it. House transition three, got hit. Knocked to the floor, and that's a foul on Jackson. And that'll send House to the line for three free throws. Nelly Jr. Joseph won't get the assist, but he sprinted. It's called rim racing in transition, and it gave Jalen House a cleaner look if he would have just jogged slowly down the floor. That would have been, would have meant Osibor would have been up there with House contesting that. He also drew Jackson in, and yeah. how many times do you see a late closeout lead to a foul on a three-point shooter? And that's part of the reason why they love playing fast tempo is because they have players that can hit threes in transition, and they have front court players with great speed who can suck the defense down into the paint. Keep in mind, House sat out nearly eight minutes of this first half when he picked up his second foul. And the fact that New Mexico was able to tread water during that time, they now have tied their largest lead of the game, House, with eight points and four made free throws. Well, he's been distributing the basketball very well as well. Of four assists already in this first half for Jalen House. We've seen Martinez be a little quiet now the last couple of minutes. He's got 10 points in the first half for the Aggies. But so far in the half court, New Mexico is clamped down. Brown misses the three. Aggies now one of nine from outside. House loses his footing. Going to be out of bounds with Utah State ball. Again, there's going to be four plays where he makes, and there's going to be one where he doesn't. 
when he goes 100 miles an hour like that. A little bit of contact, 50-50 play. Plenty of situations that's called a foul. Question now for the Aggie offense. How do they get things going again in the half court? You try and get it to that man, Osibor, though, well defended by New Mexico. Washington trying to get to his left. Joseph no good on the first attempt, blocked on the second. Bodies everywhere. Utah State comes up with it, and Osibor, slow to get back down the floor, got popped in the face. Under two minutes left here in the first. Jackson will try the three, no good. Aggies now 0 for their last five after starting this game six of seven. Now New Mexico will slow it down a little bit here, Mike. Joseph can't handle the pass, turnover New Mexico. That was a gift-wrapped one for the Aggies. And Drew Washington just threw an absolute bullet. A, a very difficult play to catch when you're backpedaling in pick-and-roll action and rolling to the rim. We'll step aside for a moment. New Mexico with their largest lead of the game, 126 left in the first. Welcome back, Utah State trailing by four, New Mexico been able to really clamp down defensively, Mike. The Aggies 0 for their last five. How do they get some offense going here in the half court? Because that's where they've really struggled the last couple of minutes. Keep going inside. Uh, ultimately, I think the more offense you run through Osibor, the better you're going to be. And he's actually getting looked at right now. Looks like he got hit above the eye. He's putting a contact lens back in. Okay. Do you want contacts? No, I don't. Maybe I should after, <laughs> after blowing that call. You're one of the fortunate ones born with perfect 2020 eagle eye vision. But here it is. Here's the play where we think it happened. That was an awesome play that was flying to contest the shot. A little bit of friendly fire, but got the contact back in. It appears to be all right. Martinez, catch and shoot three. No good. Utah State now one for 11 from three. Now, I don't think the Utah State coaching staff likes that shot. A, a real quick three, you had the opportunity for Osibor on a roll off that pin down. House will try the triple. That's off target. And New Mexico now one for their last nine. It was a game that saw scoring in bunches early on, but it's really slowed down. The last handful of minutes. Martinez, the drive to the baseline, picks up the foul. He'll head to the free throw line. To your point, you said just be aggressive and continue to attack the cup. I love that that little hezzy when you shake your head and you move your, your foot and your jab step at the same time. Love that move. It's hard to guard. You're, you, you feel like as a defender, you're just reacting. You can't predict in that situation. It was the first foul on Omsiel, and Danny Sprinkle said Ian Martinez is our best finisher at around the rim. Had a monster dunk to open up this game, and now at the line for the first of two free throws. Oh. Toppin and Baker check back in for New Mexico. With 40.8 left here. Mike, any chance New Mexico, we've seen them with their tempo and their pace, so they try to go two for one after the free throw. I think it depends on what kind of defense Utah State gets set up in. As they're going to walk it up, that means no. But I was curious to see if Utah State was going to go their 1-3-1 one, one zone. We saw it for one possession in this game. Looks like they're going to save it more for the second half. Danto will wait for his moment to attack. 10 to shoot. Here comes the ball screen. He eschews it, goes up and under. Unbelievable finish for Dent. And Mike, how about that? A little cat and mouse with the ball screen gets to the rim. New Mexico leads by five. A 
next level play from Donovan Dent on this last possession here, Mike. All you high school point guards, you need to watch this play over and over and over again. Not for the finish, but for the ball screen reject. Great point guards in the modern game should reject the ball screen a minimum of 50% of the time. You can always go back to the ball screen. The defense always works on what you do when you come off the ball screen. Very rarely do defense and scatter reports work on what you do if you reject the ball screen. Utah State without a field goal the last four minutes. They try to go for a quick hitter. Eight seconds left in the corner, left wide open. It's Jackson, no good. Baker toes the line, has a chance, flips it down the court. Webb up ahead, off seal, trying to beat the horn. It is waved off. Almost had it, on seal did. Would have been a terrific finish to close out the first half. But either way, New Mexico leads 44-39 on the road with no Jamal Mashburn Jr. One more look. Uh, you said it, Jordan. No Jamal Mashburn Jr. And he clearly doesn't get it off in time. A gutsy first half for New Mexico. Weathered a big storm from Utah State. Another look at that. Just doesn't quite get it off. Closer than we thought, though. A terrific first half from Oxio. He leads all New Mexico scorers with 13 points. That's the end of the first half with the score 44-39. New Mexico 21-1 when leading at half. After the break, we'll send you to Brent and the Gang in New York with AT&T at the half. You're watching college basketball on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Welcome back. You're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. And what a first half we had in Logan. New Mexico leading 44-39 over Utah State. The Lobos on the edge of the NCAA tournament. A win would be huge for them. Welcome back in. Jordan Kent alongside Mike O'Donnell. And coming into this game, New Mexico was down their leading scorer. Jamal Mashburn Jr. out with an illness. Then Jalen House goes out with the two fouls. The fact that the bench outscored Utah State 13-0 in that first half was huge for the Lobos. Pretty good sign on the road as well. And you think about New Mexico, they're 18th in the nation in scoring. They average 82 points per game. they 44 at halftime. They are well on their way without their leading score. So they've got help from JT Toppin, who had 10 points on 5-7 of seven shooting. And then Mustafa Amsil, 13 points in that first half. A season high. At one point, he went three threes in a row with House on the bench. Let's take a look at the first half stats brought to you by Chase. Three-point shooting, nothing to really brag about for either team, but New Mexico did knock down three triples. We mentioned 13-0 advantage and bench points. And how about the Lobos out-rebounding the Aggies? And we're getting extra possessions. Uh, they have seven of those uh, rebounds are offensive. And that's uh, Nelly Jr. Joseph, JT Toppin, keeping possessions alive. Utah State was one for their last 10 to close out the first half. Went scoreless over four minutes and 30 seconds as Osibor now makes it one for their last 11. House, the little pocket pass on the ground. Joseph can't get it. Osibor brings it back down. Ball slam going baseline. Sneaks it in. Paul Slip just seems to make the right play, even as a freshman, over and over again, especially these last six games. Paul Slev has been excellent. Two of two from the field with four points. Dent stops out of that and blocked by Osibor. Johnson thought about it. Don Johnson will get it down low, off the block. Jumper is pure. Right out of the gate, Utah State. A bucket, a stop, a bucket. And that was the momentum they needed. One for their last 11, now back-to-back -back baskets. And you know this, being on the floor, that can just start to give you that confidence you need. To find your rhythm on offense. Stopping with the left, no good. Osipor bothering another shot. Brown has to kick it back out top. Johnson will put it on the floor. 
Johnson spinning, tries to go glass. Osibor pump fake, but fouled as he goes up a second time. And he'll head to the line. Catch trip along the baseline for the freshman False Lev. And then they go inside. I mean, this is part of Utah State's offense. The ability to score without having to make a lot of threes is what makes them difficult to guard. It's not a your typical modern college basketball offense where they have to rely or they need a lot of three-point shooting in order to be efficient. Utah State is still one of the more efficient half-court offensive teams in the country without a consistent three-point shot. 6-0 run to start the second half as the Aggies reclaim the lead. A five-point advantage for New Mexico evaporating in the first two minutes. House loses the rock. Here's Brown up ahead. False left sprinting. House hurries down the floor. Cuts off Brown. Exceptional defensive play. That was also Nelly Jr. Joseph sprinting back to make a defensive play. Foul on False left. But Mike, the foot speed that Jalen House demonstrated to cut off Brown as well as the transition defense for the Lobos. That's what he does. It's big time speed from Jalen House every single time he steps foot onto the floor. That's why he's going to be in the running for defensive player of the year in the Mountain West. Toppin trying to spin, gets crunched by Osibor as to kick it back up top. Dent trying to get to his left, able to get the angle. He can finish with his left, he can finish with his right. Look at this pass. Oh, oh, Dent trying to answer right back, and the pace is starting to pick up here, folks. Uh, how great is this? Buckle up here in Logan. Some of the best basketball in the country is played in the Mountain West all season long. And Johnson loses that handle, but that is deflected out of bounds. That'll be Aggie's ball. With the ability to run the floor, the pinpoint pass to Osibor, the catch and the quick finish. Exceptional all around. In for Isaac Johnson. Josh Aduje checks in for Isaac Johnson. Osibor directing traffic, wants to clear things out. He'll go one on one. Osibor spinning, blocked by Joseph. That is just some strong one on one defense, Mike. Well, that is what Nelly Jr. Joseph does so well. He's a terrific shot blocker and rim protector. Does so much that goes unnoticed for this New Mexico team. A transfer from Iona. Look at House. Rick Pitino as House intercepts that. Amseal. House thought about it. House loses the handle again. Was looking for a call. Brown to Martinez from outside. Martinez with the triple. Seventh assist for Brown. Amsil. Martinez nearly rips it away, but a foul on the floor against Martinez. And the crowd does not agree with that one. Martinez had three threes to start the second half in Albuquerque back in January. Team's leading scorer in that game. Hitting his first triple here. Dent, bothered by Osibor. The number of shots that Osibor is starting to bother near the rim has been very problematic. And that is a block at the summit, but a foul with the body against Joseph. And temper starting to heat up a little bit on the floor. Back and forth we go. Utah State trying to find a little bit of rhythm. It looks like they found it coming out of halftime.
Tomorrow at 2 Eastern, Conference Tournament Hoops continues with the Patriot League semifinals as Bucknell goes head-to-head -head against Colgate. Followed by Lehigh facing Boston University as the road to the Final Four continues here on CBS Sports Network. And Colgate has absolutely dominated the Patriot League Tournament over the last five years. Boston University knocking them off in 2020. Of course, no NCAA Tournament that year, but Colgate, another run in the making for them. Possible. Uh, a tale as old as time. Matt Langle winning 20 games on the season and dominating the Patriot League. Colgate is 23-9 and nine on the season. They've got a balanced scoring attack. They average over 15 assists a game. You know, you fill out your bracket. Colgate wins. That's a team. Could be upset city. Almost that time of year, my oh, friend. Best. It is a national holiday, in my opinion, and just a moment that you always circle on the calendar as... Aduje heads to the line from London, England. His mom and sister are here. They made the trip across the pond. I believe that's what they call it. And what he's been able to do this season for Utah State has given them a lot of flexibility on offense, can defend multiple positions. And now it's two free throws to push the lead to four. Star role player. Last game had, came off the bench, 24 minutes, three points. They had four rebounds and four assists. There's a lot for the Aggies. Dent whips a pass to House in the corner. Three ball corner pocket. That was really good action on by Dent going baseline, knowing that House was perfectly open in the corner. Martinez backing down, tries to get it into Osibor, intercepted by Joseph. House dishes it. Dent. Double clutch finish off the window. That's the fifth assist tonight for Jalen House. Brown creates a little bit of air space and knocks down the three. Brown now with a dozen points, four of seven from the field. Maggie's by two. Nice pass. Baker, 4-3. Beautiful pass from House. As he tells the crowd here to quiet down. What an unselfish play from Jalen House. That extra pass, love that. House with six assists. Aduje, beautiful touch as he goes window shopping. When your stars are a little inconsistent, you've got to have that other guy step up, Jordan Kent. Aduje making it happen. Dent racing around the corner, misses the first time, whips it to Joseph. House, this time taking his time in the corner. House the drive, forces it over to Joseph with the finish. Right now, it feels like New Mexico is able to attack the paint off the bounce at will. The backcourt for New Mexico is doing an excellent job of attacking the rim. Osibor, jump stop, draws the foul again. He'll take another trip to the free throw line. There's House getting into the paint again, drawing two defenders, and it's Nelly Jr. Joseph doing all the gritty work that the Lobos need to get done tonight. Foul is on Nelly Joseph Jr., his third foul to go with his eight points and nine rebounds. Osibor misses the first free throw. And they'll miss his rebounding. Now, not just the scoring or the shot blocking, but nine rebounds. And there's 1340 left. It's been a monster on the glass. Talpin will check in for him. That is free throw number 20 for Utah State. Osiborne misses both of them. Washington. Nice two-point jump shot off the drive. Big time bucket for the freshman. Martinez spinning. Martinez falling to the floor. It's going to be a trip against New Mexico. As House screaming some defensive instructions to Washington. That's foul number three on Jalen House. And he looks over at Coach Patino and says, I'm fine, I'm fine, don't take me out yet. 
And this is one of those games where you've got to win. You can't afford to try and roll the dice with House off the floor again. Well, no question. No, no mash burn tonight. Aduje trying to get to the paint. Can't get it over. Omsu. Got Amseal on the block, little roll and replace potential. Howell sprinting to the cup, tries to dump it off. Loose ball again on the floor, popcorns around. It's false left, that scoops it up. False left, screaming down the oh. floor, right hand finish. Oh. Aggies cut the lead to one. Baker trying to work the two-man game. Toppin down low, size advantage. Osibor comes over to help. Baker, long three. Off the front of the rim, Osibor comes crashing down to earth. Scooped up by Washington. And then House will reset with 16 to shoot. Omsil, five to shoot. Still spinning. Oh, what a beautiful move. With the shot clock winding down, we've seen everything from Amseal tonight. He's been big time from three. That's a tough move. The spin move to push off the defender. Wow. He has 15 of New Mexico's 17 bench points. The Lobo 17 4 advantage in points from the pie. X Factor, I tried to tell you. Duje finding himself a lot of opportunity ripped away by Washington. House will walk it down the floor. A mini conference with Patino on the sideline to set up the next play. It's Amsil. This time working against Brown. He's got two. Amsil trying to pivot. Fishes a pass outside. Baker the triple. Oh, rattles it home. How about the pass from Amseal, though? The presence of mind, he draws an additional defender, and then the kick out. Right now, might be, Amseal might be having the game of his life right now. How good has this game been? Volslev, tough finish. Amseal making huge plays. The Mountain West is big time. College Basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Chase Freedom Unlimited. How do you cash back? And by Daisy. Creamy, pure, and natural cottage cheese. Only Daisy Cottage Cheese will do. The stakes are high in Logan, Utah State. A win tonight would give them the outright Mountain West Conference regular season title for New Mexico. A team that many people have as one of the last four in. A quad one victory on the road would be huge for them. I don't know who that guy was, but I want to be friends with that guy. That was awesome. How about the blue gloves in the stands? Go get the party started for you. I got to get some of those blue gloves. I need whatever he needs to get going in the morning. I'll tell oh, you that man, that, that, that's the kind of energy we're having tonight. And a gamble here by Washington. Brown left wide open for the three. Can't capitalize, and Washington secures the board. And Mike, what's fascinating, New Mexico's known for their pace of play. Just four fast break points to Utah State's 19, yet they lead by six. And even though Utah State would, would prefer to slow it down, when they run, they run exceptionally well. Utah State is actually fourth in the nation in transition oh, offense scoring efficiency. And a foul by Omsil on the offensive rebound attempt, and so it'll be Utah State balls. We step aside for a moment. Baraku Week presented by Kubota. We've talked about the energy level here and maybe the secret 
is in the gloves, the student section called the herd. Apparently, Mike O'Donnell, the blue surgical gloves make the claps sound that much louder. That, apparently, there's some science to it. You put the gloves on, you automatically clap louder. It's a louder clap, and it does feel like that inside the stadium right now in Spectrum. But this is awesome. I don't know if I can wear these for the rest of the broadcast, <laughs> but I feel smart. I feel like a doctor right now, so I'll take it. I was about to say, you're ready for operation here. And as far as what we've been seeing operate on the floor, New Mexico up six without Jamal Mashburn Jr. Out for tonight with an illness. Didn't even come to shoot around this morning. He's the team's leading scorer. But Mike, collectively, the contributions from Omseal and Dent have really helped shoulder the scoring load that was vacant at tip-off. Absolutely. Omseal with 15 points. Nelly Jr. Joseph with eight. And they're starting to get out and push and transition more. That's where they're most comfortable. Brown up top to Sacco. Perfectly executed play out of the timeout. And that raises the volume here in Logan. Dex, up and under. Blocked by Osibor. Martinez in transition. Circus finish with the foul. How did he do that? How did he do that? Ian Martinez outrunning the entire Lobo defense. And then a display of athleticism on the other end. The block by Osibor. And Utah State doesn't run a lot, but when they do, they are good. That is a spectacular finish from Ian Martinez. Terrific throw ahead by Falslev as well. Wow, we mentioned Falslev's football background. Yeah, that's just reading a cover two defense and feathering it over the corner. Uh, uh, well said by you. Good use of the word feathering. But uh, Falslev was a dual threat quarterback in high school. Got good vision, bright future ahead for Falslev. The foul was on True Washington. Just his first personal. Makes it a two-point game. And time and time again, Mike, we have seen Osibor, especially in this second half, really make his presence felt at the rim on the defensive end. Now, also, in addition to that, Jordan, next foul for New Mexico on New Mexico is a one-and-one one for Utah State. So, you know, you, you didn't have a lot of rhythm. Really, in that last four or five minutes, you're trying to climb back into a lead. 9.49 left. Next foul, Utah State goes to the free throw line every time. Martinez sitting on 16 points, 5 of 7 from the field. Adds some tip to the bill. And now it's just a one-point game. The double high ball screen for Danny kicks it to the corner. Toppin somehow able to get the rock and puts it right in. The very rare power forward turnover and immediate steal for a bucket. Right as they drew it up. That's right. Toppin with a dozen on the night. Ball sled. Dumps it off. Awesome. Oh, a smash attack. Top it up and over two defenders. Finds the glass. JT Toppin isn't just one of the best freshmen in the Mountain West. He's one of the best freshmen in the country. Falslev now the two-man game with Osibor. 13 to shoot. Gets into the lane. Finds the angle with the scoop. They figured it out, Jordan. That's three straight possessions of running empty side pick and roll. All three possessions buckets for the Aggies. Balls left, eight points, perfect from the field. Omsil going to draw the foul on Sacco as he was dribbling near the wing. 
his first. First foul on Sacco. Josh Aduje now Replacing Ian Martinez. Aduje will come in to replace Martinez. of the offense here for New Mexico going through top in the last few possessions. False left, nearly rips it away. House draws two. Blind pass to the corner. Here is Washington. Top in, offensive rebound. Can't chase it down, though, as Brown secures it. Oh, Brown. oh the ball oh, from Brown. Brown. Oh, man. <laughs> you and I saw that from the other side of the court. He has got that thing on a string. As Washington commits the foul, and that will send Brown to the line with the one and one. And the Aggies starting to smell it. A chance to get right back into this one. They'll have free throws when we come back. Bracket Week presented by Kubota. And let's revisit our keys to the game brought to you by Daisy Brand Cottage Cheese. And Mike, what do you make of the report card so far? Well, they haven't been able to make Osibor very uncomfortable. 21 points. He's been excellent. If you look at Utah State, nine turnovers. Hey, That's okay, I would say, Jordan. But that extra pass mindset, 13 assists. You can start to see the ball movement, especially really in these last four or five minutes for Utah State. Their offense that's worked, that two-man game, empty side ball screen. They had three possessions in a row where they got three buckets in a row from one single action. New Mexico has to do a much better job of helping on the weak side. Brown hits the first free throw. What's been interesting is you have Brown, a shooter, that's been on the weak side the last couple of possessions. We've seen a two-man game with Falls Levin Osibor that has led to four of their last four shots being good. I mean, that's what they do in the half court. They will find the thing that works, and they're going to own it until you force them out of it. Aggies with the lead. Utah State, 22-1 when they score 70. Their only loss this season was against New Mexico, and that's a foul as Dent is able to get to the cup. Falslav whistled for the foul. And that'll be his fourth personal night. So he sends Donovan Dent to the line. Dent, 6 of 13, 12 points. In and out on the first one. Just thought we saw a good set design from Utah State. New Mexico immediately calls action for Donovan Dent to get downhill. Omsil did a little ghost screen, and that was designed as a... Excuse me? I lost my train of thought because I'm looking at this 15-foot tall Darius Brown. That's got to be the most distracting <laughs> thing in college basketball this season. I don't know how you make free throws with that. That's incredible. I feel like if that is the engineering of our future generation, the world is in excellent We're be hands good. moving forward. We are good. We're all set. That is next level, baby. So tied at 70 apiece, just over seven minutes. Oh, 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 oh. the spin move, lost him. Oh, no. for Martinez. able to pick up the loose change up and under fouled by Martinez the deluxe spin cycle ball screen reject with a spin and a kick out that is a thing of beauty hang that in the Louvre Jordan Kent gorgeous you have to hit that three if you have to is in that situation you have to and by the way Jordan I don't know if you are hearing any whistles blown? Because I'm not. It is exceptionally loud in here. Utah State has only lost one game at home this year. That's to Nevada. This student section, they're 
That noise and creativity is certainly helping out in the second half of the game. That monstrous Darius Brown sign is putting the wacky inflatable arm flailing tube man to shame. <laughs> Aggies by two. Utah State has made five of their last five shots. Brown back to Osibor. Osibor. Charge. And that's going to be a charge taken by Jalen House. A courageous defensive play. You could tell House read that all the way. As he knew that Brown was going to dump this off, it was a nice pocket pass from Brown. House is in perfect legal guarding position. It doesn't get any better than that. And that is so difficult to do, to read, and to be patient for the contact as well. Out to New Mexico with a three-minute scoring drought at the moment. Omsil maybe took an extra step. Joseph Jr. Oh, Nelly, it's getting hot in here. We're 90s kids. We get that reference, Jordan. Thank you. I get friend. it. That's why I'm a little millennial. I get I, it. I appreciate that. I totally get it. <laughs> This feels like every single game in the Mountain West right now. Games are tight, high-level play, execution on both ends of the floor. Awesome stuff. Another great one in the Mountain West. Three to shoot. Brown has to hoist it up. He is fouled, though. Jalen House and Pacino could not believe it. A costly foul as Brown rises up for three, and that is personal foul number four on Jalen House. Got the arm. That's a foul. Got the right arm. You love the aggressiveness. Yep. Night in, night out from house. But a shot clock winding down with you sitting on three fouls. Got to be very careful in that moment, I imagine. And then now the game you have to play for Coach Patino with your best playmaker and best defender coming off the floor with four fouls. How long can you have Jalen House on the bench? If you can get to that under four timeout and it stays within a one possession game, then you start thinking, how long can I stretch this out? Maybe one or two more possessions. It's going to be a difficult decision for Coach Patino. Brown makes two of three, 16 fouls for Utah State. So the bonus is there for New Mexico on the next foul. Great pass. Oh, Just a Valley great junior pass. Joseph to the rim. And that's what you love from Donovan Dent, that playmaking that he can step up and do when House has to go to the bench. The guard play in general in the Mountain West has been elite all season long. A Duje from the corner keeps the triple. The quick trigger for a Duje. Utah State four of five from three here in the second half. This is where Donovan Dent has to be really good. Dent with the taller Sako on him. Omsil now. He'll try to use his size advantage. Pounds it down low against Brown. Goes up. Oh, a cool two-point shot for him to draw New Mexico to within one. Where has this Omsil been all season long for New Mexico? I mean, he's having the game of his life. 17 points tonight. Just over four minutes left to play. Brown, seven to shoot, cross-court pass. Aduje from the opposite corner. No good, Asibor rips down a key offensive board. Martinez will take his time. Sprinkle wants Brown to be the ball screen here. Martinez, contested triple. One of those shots maybe uh, scratch your head on. Let's see if Utah State switches this. They don't. Martinez goes under. Dent with the left hand. Omsil blocked, but a foul as Omsil was trying to go up. That'll send him to the free throw line. Well, how good has this game been? Aduje rips a three in the corner. And New Mexico, Omsil, the game of his life. 
one point ball game here at Logan. Coming up next, the Mountain West mayhem continues as the UNLV running Rebels take on rival Nevada's Wolfpack. Gets the tip off here on CBS Sports Network. So Utah State's last home loss, their only one of the season, February 6th versus Nevada. Nick Davidson, Keenan Blackshear, they combined for 43 points and 13 rebounds as Nevada gets the upset over number 22, Utah State, 77 to 63, snapping the Aggies 13 game home winning streak. Nevada's first road win against a ranked opponent since 1981, Michael Donald. And everybody's talking about Utah State as really the talk of the Mountain West. And obviously San Diego State, they might be in that 4-5 seed range. But Nevada is projected as a 6 seed, an extremely underrated team coming out of the Mountain West. They have seven quad one wins, including wins over TCU and Washington, Jordan. The depth of this conference and what they're able to do in non-conference play. So let me ask you this. Just briefly, what happens if UNLV wins the Mountain West Tournament and New Mexico wins a couple games in the Mountain West Tournament? We could see seven teams in the Mountain West in the NCAA Tournament. That's incredible. On seal, splits a pair, and we are locked up at 78 apiece. He's got 18 on the night off the bench. New Mexico again without Jalen House for the moment. Back on the floor now with four fouls. Keep an eye on that. Osibor trying to back down Omsil. Poked away. Osibor on the floor. Turnover forced by the Lobos. That was Junior Joseph getting the deflection. Omsil thought about it. House clapping for it. Trying to go inside. And a miscommunication. Baker waited too long. Martinez, the dish off. Sacco blocked at the summit. But a foul from Baker as he was trying to get the rejection from behind. And Baker just classic telegraphed that pass, which caused that turnover. Good dish and transition by Martinez. And almost a clean block from Baker. That looked clean live. A little bit of hand. Maybe the hand part of the ball. And well, I mean, that's the, to me, that looked like play on. So that'll send Khalifa Sacco to the line, just a 52% free throw shooter for his first attempt of the night. <laughs> Rattles it home and you can hear a pin drop as he was dribbling. And also breaks a two minute scoring drought that Utah State was dealing with at the moment. Never liked that as a player when it got incredibly quiet. I would rather the fans somewhat cheering just a little bit. I always feel like I'm in trouble. Uh, no, that no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. How about that? It's the Sokka plus free throws. And the Aggies lead by two. You throw the map out the window, Mike O'Donnell, when you get to this point. House, pump fake, jump shot, too strong. Martinez chases it down. Ball sled. Going up. Oh, 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 oh. Wiggins is way to the rim and he's got 10. The poise from the freshman. 10th this time. Oh, a beautiful finish by him. And a timeout quickly called as New Mexico trails by two. 207 left and a must win for the Lobos. Utah State with 2.07 left in this ball game. New Mexico and Donovan Dent, a quick strike on this last possession. It's the tempo, the pace, the change of speed that makes hey, Donovan you, Dent you, an elite you. finisher and one of the best point guards in the country, in my opinion. He's got 15 points now. Richard Pitino called a quick timeout after that made basket. What was the conversation you think in the huddle as they start to set their press? Well, they're setting up their defense, and they, the first thing he talked about was how do you, how does House defend in a full court press scenario with those four fouls? So it's token pressure, nothing major. You're just trying to cause a slight indecision. You look at the shot clock; they don't start until 20 seconds. Ball slab, the strong drive, trying to work against House. Bodies muscling for positioning down low. 
False left. DeSacco, Sacco off his knee. New Mexico ball. So it's the right look from Falslev, but you really want Brown and Osibor in two-man game in crunch time like that. And it's not to say that you can't make that play. It's not a bad pass at all. It's the right read, but are those the guys you want under two minutes making those crunch time plays? And it felt like they wanted to go to Falslev early yeah. against House with those four fouls, but New Mexico was able to rotate well. Can the Lobos tie or take the lead with this possession? Dent wins a pass, topping, too strong. That's the board, the board. It was there. Timeout, Utah State. A minute 28 left in this game. A two-point lead. A chance to win the outright Mountain West Conference regular season title when we come back. Welcome back. It's everything you could script. Utah State, two-point lead, final regular season game of the year. And we take a look now at our Geico play of the game. What we saw earlier was Osibor snatching this rebound on the previous possession. And enough to bother the attempt by Toppin. That helps secure the lead at this moment for Utah State. So a key defensive stop has them in the driver's seat moving forward. Martinez with the body too strong, batted around, and that's going to be out of bounds. New Mexico ball as all of the Utah State bench storms the officials asking for a replay. And big picture thoughts here. New Mexico needs this win badly to increase their resume potential of an at-large bid. New Mexico still searching for an additional quad one win. They have a great net ranking at 27, but they only have two quad one wins. This would be a huge quad one win opportunity, and they're reviewing this out of bounds play. Hard to tell there. Does Baker get a hand on it? It's almost as if Osibor's hand hits Baker's hand and then knocks it out of bounds. That's exactly what it looked like. And it's got to be, to overturn it, has to be indisputable. But you're, you're right, Jordan. Osibor, Osibor's hand. It's the hand of Baker, and that sends the ball out of bounds. But it looks as though Baker's hand was the last hand to touch the basketball. I would have to agree with that. I mean, from all the angles we saw and how close it was, is it enough for you and I to look over and say, oh yeah, absolutely, it, that, that's the, they got it the wrong call. I don't think the wrong call was made on the floor. Mm. Certainly a 50-50 call with huge implications. Minute 15 left, and you mentioned that net ranking for New Mexico. No team with a net ranking under 30 has ever been locked out of the NCAA tournament. It was NC State with a 31 net ranking in 2019. That's the lowest net ranking for a team to not get accepted in the NCAA tournament. And right now, Jerry Palm has New Mexico as an 11 seed, as in the grouping of last four in, along with Colorado, Seton Hall, and St. John's. This is going to be a pretty good look here, I think. I believe it's off the back of the right hand Correct. of Baker. Now, my opinion holds zero weight on the official's decision here. Holds a lot of weight with me. I I I'm in agreement <laughs> with you. <laughs> Officials still having a conversation about this. Obviously, a very important call at this moment in the game. Possession arrow does favor New Mexico. Each team with one timeout left. This extended period of time is great for players like Darius Brown, who play, played 38 minutes so far in this game, essentially the entire game except for maybe a minute. And it's remarkable because Danny Sprinkle calls him the team's best defender. And to play that many minutes, to be that involved on the offense, to then guard the other team's best guard, takes tremendous, tremendous conditioning. 
Call is confirmed on the court. It is going to be New Mexico's wow. ball. Wow. I think you might have been right. There wasn't enough there to overturn it, possibly. But either way, New Mexico will take that. Down two, minute 15 left. Brown will pick up 10 full courts. Defensively, Utah State, what do you have to keep in mind here? Well, you know that the ball's going to be in the hands of Donovan Den here in a playmaking scenario. Jalen House is in the left corner. He's your other great playmaker. Dent, the drive, ties it up. He's done that all season long. Remaining. He's one of the biggest big shot makers in the Mountain West. We're going to get some two-man game here with Darius Brown. Brown goes to his left, tries to whip a pass. Osibor in the corner. It's Martinez. Open runway. And Martinez attacks them. And Utah State leads by two. 40 seconds left. House, the jumper. Oh, oh, man. It up again. Four second differential between shot and game clock. Utah State will call their final timeout. Tied up, 84 apiece. Everything on the line. We'll be right back. Tied at 84 apiece, 29.5 seconds left. Utah State ball on the sideline. How about these last two baskets? I mean, back and forth, the Mountain West has been like this all season long. Ian Martinez has had an awesome game. You want to talk about a big time dunk? That is a filthy Rucker Park crossover from Jalen House in a must get bucket scenario for New Mexico. Utah State ball timeout. What are they trying to dial up here offensively? Two trains of thought. Empty side pick and roll with Darius Brown and great Osibor would be good action. Then you stick Martinez in the opposite wing, who's hit three threes in this game. But let's see if they hunt Jalen House, who's got four fouls. House is on Brown right now. That's the matchup to watch. Four and a half second differential between shot and game clock. When will Utah State decide to attack? It's Martinez up top. Baker checking him. Brown will set the ball screen. It's Brown. Osibor down low. Three to shoot. Osibor out to Brown. The senior for three. Oh! Utah State makes the huge three. I need some oxygen, Jordan Kent. This game has been insane. Utah State is five of eight from three in the second half. 4.2 put back on the clock. So certainly enough for New Mexico to work with. But you imagine they've got to hunt for a three here. Well, you have to hunt for a three. Do you foul? if you're Utah State in this scenario of three. How about these big shots from Brown? Back on January 13th, down four in the final 15 seconds. It's a three-pointer with eight seconds left. Foul off the ball against Osibor. He hits the free throw. A four-point play as Utah State gets the win. And then how about in Fresno? Hits the long three, sends the game to overtime. And now you can add this to the resume on senior night on top of it. Darius Brown. 19 points, none bigger than that three-point shot. What can Darius Brown do for you? Hey, what do you think of your hockey? And so you've got some options if you're Utah State. You can foul and send New Mexico to the free throw line, eliminating the three-point shot. But either way, New Mexico has to go the length of the floor. They put Jalen House in the far corner. Looks like it'll be Dent. They'll try and catch and bring it down the floor. Seal to inbound. You've got to catch this on the run if you're Donovan Dent. You need a full head of steam as you're catching it. Oh, they go to House. It's House and he gets yeah, fouled. There you go. I, I think that's smart. I, I think you're playing the analytics to your favor. 
you're up three. There's, uh, there was less than five seconds on the clock. I think that's a really smart play by Utah State. So it sends Jalen House to the line to shoot two. New Mexico down three, 2.8 seconds left. No timeouts left for New Mexico. No timeouts left for Utah State. The importance of boxing out here for Utah State is paramount. Do you hit both, then try a quick foul, or do you go make the first one, try to miss the second? With a senior like Jalen House, wouldn't surprise me at all. Look who's positioned to rebound. JT Toppin and Nelly Jr. Joseph making the first with the miss on the potential second. Here's the important one, knocks it down. And now decision time as a mini huddle for Utah State. No timeouts remaining for either team. 2.8 seconds left. Will House try to make it or go for the intentional miss? Top of the junior Joseph are going to try to X here to get a rebound. Oh, he did hit the rim. He did hit the rim. He did hit the rim. Clock winding down. House hoises up. No good. And Utah State wins their first ever outright Mountain West Conference regular season title. What a scene in Logan. On senior night, it's Darius Brown, one of two seniors honored. That hits the biggest three-point shot of the season for the Aggies. And Danny Sprinkle in his first year at the helm at Utah State, a team that was picked ninth in the preseason media poll, will now sit atop the Mountain West Conference. Osibor could have taken a bad shot there. Gives it to his longtime teammate, and Brown, the teardrop, to win it. Are you kidding me? There is Brown. 87-85, Utah State gets the win. They will finish 14-4 in conference play. New Mexico 10-8. As we said before, just their second ever conference title, but their first ever outright. They shared it in 2019, but this time they can put both their mitts on that trophy as the Aggies have defied all expectations coming into this year and have shown the resolve of a champion throughout what has been a brutal Mountain West Conference slate. And long live the court storm, Jordan Kent. Long live the court storm. Aggies improved to 26-5 on the year. And for New Mexico, it's a two-point loss on the road against a quad one team. You figure they probably doesn't impact their net ranking too much. It won't impact their net ranking too much, but they're, they need an additional quad one win on their resume. They're going to have to get it in the Mountain West Tournament. It was a gutsy road performance. I thought they played really well, especially considering no Jamal Maxburn, their leading scorer. Other guys stepped up in a big way. I'll tell you this right now. If Mustafa Amsil even plays 60% of the way he played tonight in the Mountain West Tournament, who knows what could happen in New Mexico. He was a big difference maker. But Utah State continues to show why it is the one of the best stories in all of college basketball. Not a single player returning, first year head coach, and you win the regular season title in the Mountain West. Wow. The herd has collected at midcourt, and they are celebrating their champions as they make their way around the floor. As we said before, Utah State, nobody had them on the radar as far as a threat in this conference, but they shot the world this season and pick up their first ever outright Mountain West Conference regular season championship. 2024 Mountain West Conference champion. Danny Sprinkle talked about the culture. We saw this during shoot around and throughout the day. This is the team, Mike, that believes in one another, plays for one another. And once they discovered that unselfishness led to success, that's when the rocket took off for them this season. Senior night for Utah State. And after all the seniors were announced at half court, they're taking a picture. The entire team sprinted over with the seniors because they wanted to be in the picture with them. You and I looked at each other and said, we said, whoa. That is culture. That Those type of moments, any Hooper knows, are worth four to five extra points when you've got teammates that love each other. Osibor in that last play, you're kidding yourself if you don't think Osibor and Brown are friends. Friends don't make those kind of plays late in the game. That was an unselfish play by Osibor, who was having a great game.
They came here with Danny Sprinkle from Montana State. The offseason workouts were brutal. The first three months were all defense, but it was constantly Brown in the locker room telling all of these Utah State players who had just met Danny Sprinkle, trust me, this is going to work out. you got to believe in the process. We will be better for this. And now they're seeing the fruits of their labor that was sown back in the fall. And that's another quad one win for Utah State. That makes five quad one wins for Utah State. I mean, they're projected as a five seed. There's a really good chance we could see them inside the top four seeds in the NCAA tournament, especially if they win a couple games in the Mountain West. There's another player, though, Jordan, that we didn't talk about for Utah State. Ian Martinez was terrific. He made a huge play to start the game, that dunk, where we, everybody went crazy. Ian Martinez was excellent, 22 points tonight. Coming up next, we have UNLV at Nevada. Another Mountain West matchup for Michael Donald and our entire crew. I'm Jordan Kent. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. So let's send you to the Lawlor Vet Center in Reno. It's UNLV at Nevada. So long from Logan.